So whatever happened to that classic 1970s TV show, Land of the Lost? Let's find out. Movies. Music and Monsters. Hey guys, Dan Monroe here talking about movies, music, and monsters. Ah, Land of the Lost, one of the many outstanding live-action adventure shows by the kings of Saturday morning children's entertainment, Sid and Marty Croft. You know these guys, Puffin Stuff, Lidsville, Sigmund and the Sea Monster, and so many more. Land of the Lost ran for three seasons and originally aired from 1974 to 1976 on NBC. This really cool show employed a very unique combination of both live action and stop motion animation. Sadly, as of March 2024, we just lost the incredibly talented and well-loved actor, Ron Harper. <laughs> I remember watching the third season of Land of the Lost, seeing Ron Harper and thinking, wait a minute, it's Verdon. He somehow got back from the Planet of the Apes and then got lost again with these guys. From Garrison's Gorillas to Planet of the Apes to the third season of Land of the Lost, rest in peace, Ron Harper, you will be missed. Now, before we get started, I want to give a huge shout out and thanks to Rob Klein, who provided a ton of information and photos for this video. Rob is not only an incredible fan of the franchise, but he's also Vice President of Creative Development at Sid and Marty Croft Pictures. Rob also directed all 15 episodes of Mondays with Marty, and is a Hollywood expert on Pawn Stars and Collector's Call on MeTV. This show really took a big departure from Sid and Marty Croft's previous shows like Puffin Stuff and Lidsville, which mostly featured those extremely colorful, oversized costumes and puppets. And even though this was hailed mostly as a children's show, it was actually pretty serious with really interesting and fascinating storylines that, in my opinion, still hold up today. The basic mythology of the show revolved around a mysterious dimensional portal that, when you get swept down a gigantic 1,000-foot waterfall, you enter this weird, strange time paradox. You know, the characters often talk about the time doorway, but the writers never intended for that to mean time in terms of Earth history, but rather some strange, enigmatic zone where time and space are basically unknown. Known. It's interesting, when the show was originally conceived, it was more of a Swiss family Robinson style story with a young boy and his father being lost in some exotic world. The writers intentionally didn't include a mother character in the show at all, mostly because they felt that the kids would be in greater danger and peril being protected only by the father. Sid Croft actually asked Gene Roddenberry to be the head writer for the show. Gene was busy with other things at the time, but he did suggest a young writer named David Gerald who basically rethemed the show to what we ended up seeing during its three-year run. When Land of the Lost was in pretty early pre-production, the plan was always for the show to have a really big epic scale with expansive worlds and fantastic forms of life with mysterious technologies. But they had to get it all done on the limited production budget of a Saturday morning children's series. They even went as far as to hire a special linguist named Victoria Fromkin to create a special language for the little humanoid ape people or Pakuni. And she built the language into the show in a way that would literally allow viewers to sort of learn the language over the course of many episodes while watching the show. That is so unique and so interesting, I'm literally not aware of any other show, children's show anyway, that put that much effort into a mythological language. Super cool. Yeah, Land of the Lost was great, but one of my other favorite shows was, of course, Lost in Space. 
Why? Because I loved the robot, and I even have one right here in my office giving me security and protection from all sorts of aliens and monsters. And speaking of protection, one thing we all need these days, especially online, is security and protection. So I'd like to literally just take one minute to introduce today's sponsor, Surfshark. These guys let you surf the web with no tracking with a VPN, shield your devices with antivirus, and more importantly, guard your identity all in one easy-to-use app. Whenever you connect to the internet, all your personal information is blurred out or encrypted. So if someone tries to snoop on you or worse, steal your personal information, you're protected. Think of it as kind of your own personal B9 robot looking out for you whenever you go online. With Surfshark, you can still get all the amazing website deals like Amazon and Ally Express, even if they're blocked in your country or when you're traveling out of the country. Simply connect to the country you want, and there you go. Surfshark allows you to stay safe on public Wi-Fi, get the best deals online when shopping, and even feel confident accessing your own bank accounts safely even when you're not at home. There's not only incredible support 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, but also a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can even use the coupon code MONROE for an extra 3 months free. So don't go online without your robot online protector, Surfshark. Give it a try. You know what I did? And it works. And now... Back to the land of the lost. David Gerald, who was the story editor during the first season, claimed that he pretty much created the entire concept of the show based on photographs of various science fiction concepts that were all bound together in a book and given to him personally by Sid Croft. David not only created all the really cool creatures in Land of the Lost, but also worked on Star Trek and created the Tribbles. The cast was really quite amazing. You got Spencer Milligan playing Rick the father, along with his two children, Will and Holly, played by Wesley Ewer and Kathy Coleman. I would always have to chuckle a little bit when the show came on and I would hear the opening theme with the banjos and the synthesizers. Super unique, super cool, super memorable. And dinosaurs. Oh man, the show had dinosaurs. We had Dopey the friendly Brontosaurus and Grumpy the Tyrannosaurus Rex that would occasionally show up and get run off by the giant fly swatter. I mean, as a 10-year-old, what's not to love? Some of these special effects presented unique challenges, mostly because the stop-motion animation of the dinosaurs was shot on film, while the actors were shot on video in front of enormous blue screens. In the beginning, there seemed to be some issues combining these two effects, but the special effects team eventually mastered the technique, giving us the amazing illusions we finally ended up seeing on screen. All the dinosaurs were done in stop motion on film, and the show was shot on tape. And to try and marry the film to tape was an impossible feat. Even Disney came in to try and help us accomplish that. And we really thought after we started the first episode that it was going to be impossible to even do the series. To make the world look even more expansive, they would shoot background plates or use really elaborate miniature sets, shoot the actors against the blue screen, and then superimpose them over the top. Although it looks a little bit dated today, it certainly gave the show a very unique look and larger-than-life feel, which really sparked my imagination as a kid. It is so interesting the way that this was actually done. There was no post-production compositing. All these shots with the actors and the dinosaurs were basically done live. 
The actors would watch the background plates of the dinosaurs while standing in front of a big blue screen. Then the chroma key effect through the video processing would shrink the actors down to a really small size. And all the compositing took place live all at one time to capture the final scene. According to the cast, they literally filmed not one, but two episodes a week. One episode every two and a half days. According to Phil Paley, the actor who played Little Chaka, there were three different sound stages used to film Land of the Lost. The first was basically an enormous jungle set. The second sound stage was the interior set for all the slee stack dwellings and caves. And the third sound stage was really nothing more than a giant blue screen. There was an incredible amount of really well-respected writers in the science fiction community that contributed scripts to the show. Even Walter Koenig. Chekhov from Star Trek wrote an episode of Land of the Lost. How cool is that? Once the third season rolled around, Spencer Milligan, the guy who played Rick Marshall, the father, suddenly disappears while trying to get home. But he's immediately replaced by his brother Jack, played by Ron Harper. But why did Spencer Milligan leave the show? Well, basically money. He wanted himself, along with the entire cast, to receive compensation for using their images on all the merchandise that was making the studio a ton of money. I don't know. To me, that seems not only fair, but a really nice gesture for the entire cast. But the network executives said no way and let him go. God, network executives. Anyway, Ron Harper immediately came in as Jack the Brother, and they continued on for the third and final season of the show. You know, the first couple seasons of Land of the Lost had scripts that were really, really serious and interesting. But like Lost in Space, by the time the third season rolled around, a lot of that serious dramatic tone was dropped, and it sort of ended up just being family fun. And why was the show eventually canceled? Well, according to Kathy Coleman, who played Holly, the show just grew way too expensive to keep going, and the network executives needed to make a decision whether to continue with a fourth season or just shut it down. And they shut it down. Okay, but what about all the amazing props and costumes from the show? Well, sadly, from what I understand, there's not much left today. But there is some. According to Marty Croft, the sets that were mostly made of foam were literally tossed out at the end of season three because they were in really rough shape. The original models and armatures of the stop-motion puppets used in Land of the Lost do still exist. But again, they're not in the best condition but they do still exist, which is really cool. The original Enoch costume was recently completely restored by the incredible team at Tom Spina Designs. When the prop first showed up, it was in really bad shape. The hands and the feet were missing, many of the scales were missing, and most of the latex costume was basically crumbling with age. But here it is today, completely restored and looking absolutely amazing. Believe it or not, only three Slee Stacks costumes were ever created for the show. The production team had to literally merge shots and use editing tricks to make it look like there was more than three at a time on the screen. One of the two original Slee Stacks costumes left can be found in Marty Croft's own personal office. The only other remaining Sleestack costume is owned by Rob Klein. Also, and this is unbelievably cool, apparently Big Alice survived. Look at this beauty. Yeah, she's missing her left claw, but it's absolutely staggering to think that this unbelievable puppet prop survived getting thrown in the dumpster the way most of the props did back in the day. 
This prop is also owned by Rob Klein and is super cool. Land of the Lost premiered Saturday mornings on NBC in 1974 and was immediately considered a huge success with both children and families. I think that Land of the Lost made a much bigger impression on uh, the children that watched it. The Intelligent Dinosaur, which I just can't think of his name right this second. You know, he had an episode that was incredible. The Crystal was incredible. You know, there are a number of Land of the Lost episodes where the stories, you know, were really special. All these shows later aired in syndication from 1978 to 1985 as part of the Croft Superstars package. Unfortunately, DVDs of Land of the Lost are no longer currently available, but you can purchase the shows for direct download. The link for that is in the description. Land of the Lost can currently be seen on the official Sid and Marty Croft channel on Cineverse. Again, link in the description. And were there toys? You betcha. We had the slideshow projector, the wilderness campfire set, the board game, coloring books, activity books, magic slates, and an amazing set of GAF Viewmaster reels. Ben Cooper even produced some really outstanding standing Halloween costumes, including Rick Marshall and the Slee Stacks. And some of this stuff today is super rare. And what would any classic 70s TV show be without the amazing metal lunchbox? Well, Land of the Lost had one of those too. So Land of the Lost came and Land of the Lost went, but that certainly wasn't the last we heard of this incredible show. In 1991, there was a semi-successful remake of the show that ran for two seasons. And in 2009, a major motion picture was released starring comedian Will Ferrell with the Croft brothers themselves serving as co-producers. But that, my friends, is the topic of another video. I really hope everybody enjoyed that retrospective on Land of the Lost, and if you did and you like this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. I've got a whole bunch of new videos coming up very soon that I know you guys are just gonna dig. As always, if anybody has any questions, drop them down in the comments and I will do my best to try to answer them for you. And please feel free to stop back anytime as we continue our conversation on movies, music, and monsters. Movies, music, and monsters.